Okay, so in this problem, we're going to talk about compound interest, and we're going to introduce the idea of interest tables. So it's quite a simple problem. Pause the video, take a moment to read the problem, and when you're ready to see the solution, restart the video. Okay, so as you can see, this problem is quite simple. We're looking at a $500 investment for a time period of three years, and we earn interest at 6%. Seems very simple. However, I'd like to try to encourage you to use a procedure in your approach to solving engineering economics problems. So this problem is quite simple, but it will allow us to practice a procedure that will help us when the problems become more complex. So step one of this procedure is read the problem carefully and then convert the text of the problem into the types of variables that we, we know we're going to need to identify. So um, I like to do that first using a cash flow diagram. So if we, we look at this problem as a three-year timeline, time t equal to zero is now, three years, if we invest $500 now, when we make an investment, the we have to give the money to someone, whether it's a bank or someone else who's going to pay us a return. So if we give the money at time t equal to zero, that's going to be a downward arrow on our cash flow diagram. So our $500 investment is a down arrow. What we'd like to know is, what is our return? What's the money we get back at the end of three years? So there's going to be some unknown up arrow at time t equal to three. So drawing a cash flow diagram allows us to sort of visualize the problem. The next thing we should try to do is put it in the language of the engineering economics time value of money problems. So for this particular problem, I can say, well, the P, the present value, is going to be my $500. And it occurs at time t equal to zero. That's always a good clue. What I'm interested in is the future value. The number of compounding periods will be three, because it's three years. And the problem tells me that the interest rate is 6%, and 6% compounded annually. We'll get into variations on compounding periods later in the course, but for now, let's just assume that 6% is compounded for each of the three years. So now that we've, we've drawn the cash flow diagram, identified the variables, the next thing for us to do is say, well, what formula can I use to solve for what I need to know? And with a little bit of practice, you'll realize that for this type of a problem, the future value that we'd like to calculate is simply the present value times one plus the interest rate raised to the power of the number of periods. And we've already covered this in the compound interest uh, videos that we've looked at. So quite easily I can plug these numbers in and remember that the interest rate of 6% is 0 0.06. The number of years is three years. If I just do the math on this, I end up with $595.50 as the future value of my investment. You might say, well, that's pretty simple. It is. But I'd like to introduce another idea. In finance and in engineering economics, it's quite common for us to use something called interest tables or compound interest tables. And in order to do this, we introduce a special type of notation that I would strongly encourage you to learn. Its usefulness will become apparent uh, later in the course. You may be very tempted as engineers or technical people to just simply use a formula, but you'll see in this course that not all formulas for time value of money are as simple as a simple conversion of a P to an F. When we get into more complicated patterns of cash flows, these formulas become very complex. And although we can always use a formula, sometimes the usefulness of 
a compound interest table uh, uh, becomes apparent. So I'd like to introduce a new notation. So for this particular problem, rather than write the formula f equals p times 1 plus i to the n, if I know I'm looking for f, I can write this in a different way. f is equal to p times, and this is the compound interest factor that will represent the value of the formula. And the notation that I use for this particular one is called f given p for a certain interest rate and a certain number of periods. Pretty simple. Um, the way to remember it is if you know the value of p and you multiply it by the f given p factor, you could sort of view that almost like a little piece of algebra and say the p's cancel, what I'm left with is the f, which is what I'm looking for. This particular problem, we would write, write it like this, 500 times the f given p factor for 6% and 3 periods. You can say, well, what can I do with this? Um, it just so happens that at the back of most finance textbooks and engineering economics textbooks, you'll find interest tables. And there will be an interest table for 6%. So we'll look in the back of the book for the interest table that represents 6%. If I look at the 6% table, I find the column that is for the F given P factors, and I use the row of the table for a value of N equal to 3. So if I go to the back of my textbook, and I'd encourage you to do this now, and I find the 6% interest table, and I go down the column for f given p, and I go across the row for n equal to 3, you should find a value in your table of 1.191. And if I multiply 1.191 times the 500, I end up with $595.50. You can see we get the same answer we got here. Here I'm using a, a compound interest table. Here I'm using the formula. But I would strongly encourage you to familiarize yourself with compound interest tables and the use of the compound interest factors.